We are just days away from a total solar eclipse, and if you haven't made any plans yet, don't worry, there's still time. On Monday, the moon will pass between the Earth and sun, casting a shadow in North America from Mexico to Maine. ABC News meteorologist Samara Theodore joins me now, along with astrophysicist Akeem Alusayi and AAA spokesperson Aixa Diaz for more. Hakeem, start with the science here. Explain to me, yes. look, my, I'm five, what's actually happening, and how rare is it to see a solar eclipse like the one we'll see on Monday? Well, it depends on if you're willing to travel. That determines how rare it is. So where you are located on Earth, whoever you are, wherever you are, they're rare. But in general, they're not, because there's two cycles that occur naturally. So every astronomical body is always being illuminated by the sun and always casting a shadow. So we know that every 28 days, roughly, the Earth, sun, and moon line up for a new moon. So it must be a new moon, which means they're in a line with the moon between the Earth and the sun for a total solar eclipse. But most of the time, the moon shadow goes above or under the Earth. It doesn't fall on the Earth. And so there's another cycle. The moon's orbit is tilted five degrees relative to the Earth's sun plane, and that orbit itself moves with a particular period. So you have to have a new moon when the moon is crossing that plane. And so we also know the time of that. You put those two things together, you get what's known as the Saro cycle, how often the shadow falls on the Earth, but the Earth itself is rotating. So that means that even if it falls on the Earth on this day, when it falls on the Earth again, it's not going to be the same point of Earth. So every couple of years, you have around three total solar eclipses, I think. So, you know, or maybe it's the other way around. Every three years, you have two. It's, it's something like that. Uh, but I travel to see them. This will be my sixth one. Hakeem, how are your drawing skills? I feel like we need to get you a whiteboard for these kinds of things. You know, this is really simple. So this is the one thing I can draw. My drawing <laughs> skills are horrible. I feel terrible compared to other physics professors who are always draw in 3D. But I can draw a cone. All right, we might put you to the test on that one. Uh, Samar, what's the forecast for Monday? Because this becomes a lot less exciting if there are clouds listen, blocking the way, right? Listen, listen, you want the good news or you want the, it is what it is, I paid Ooh, my money, even uh -oh. if I gotta close my eyes, we're gonna see some darkness. Okay, news. let's get um, okay. all of it. So we'll it depends on it. where you live. Let's go ahead and pull up my map here uh, that the team has made. We are looking at pretty decent clearing occurring if you live in Burlington, Niagara Falls, the Northeast up towards Maine. When you get to Carbondale and Indianapolis, you might see some clearing possible. Remember, this is the region where we will have high clouds, those wispy clouds, so you should see it a little better. Now, once you get to Dallas, you get to Arkansas, Louisiana, it's not looking so good right now. It's looking like we could have some really low-level and mid-level cloud coverage in that region. All right. Aixa, AAA booking data shows Dallas, Austin, and San Antonio are the most popular cities along that path of totality right now in terms of travelers. Is it too late to plan a road trip at this point? And what are your tips for making plans? It's not, Diane. You can still do a road trip if you live anywhere near the path of totality. The problem is where are you going to stay? Hotels, according to our booking data, are 48% more expensive this weekend in April compared to a traditional April weekend. Keep in mind, it's spring break for a lot of schools, too. So you've got extra travelers out this time of year. So if you can do a road trip and stay with family or friends in the area, even better. But think about where you're going to watch the eclipse, because that makes a huge difference. Can you stay somewhere where you're walking distance so you don't have to get back in the car after the eclipse. Here's the thing. Traffic is going to be terrible. And we saw this in 2017, where cities along the path of totality had traffic for hours afterwards. So think of it like a concert or a big game. Bring some camping chairs and plan to stay a little bit longer. Also, a big AAA tip is don't drive with your eclipse glasses. It sounds like common sense, but some people might have them in the car. Maybe they're already in the car. They want to look up. Don't do it. If you're driving, keep your eye on the road. Hakeem, what if you're not in the path of totality? What will you see if it's not that full solar eclipse? Yeah, you're going to see a partial solar eclipse, and those are still pretty cool to look at. But you have to make sure that you have the proper eyewear. And you can skip eyewear altogether by casting the partial eclipse onto a surface, like a wall or table or the ground. All you need is anything with a tiny hole, and let the sunlight pass through it, and you will see the disk of the sun being covered by the silhouette of the moon. So, you know, even if you're not on the path of totality, there's, it's still a really cool thing 
thing to see. But remember, don't look at the sun with the naked eye. Don't look at the sun with sunglasses. Those are not certified and they're not safe. And you could damage your eyesight. So make sure you have proper eyewear if you're going to look at the sun directly. And I know you can damage your eyes without even realizing that it's happening in the moment. So, Samara, where are you going to be watching this? And what's I your advice be, for people doing this? Okay, well, one, I will be in Indianapolis with Geo. We're going to be headed uh, there, and we'll be watching the total eclipse that we're going to be on air uh, as well. So make sure you're tuning in on Monday from 2 to 4. And uh, the other thing I do want to leave the note is for people who are traveling, Diane, from Dallas, that region down in Texas, Oklahoma, there are thunderstorms that will be severe. So, And that'll be hitting right after after the eclipse occurs around 3 34 o'clock so keep that in mind for those hitting the road as well. want to be careful once you're getting out all right tomorrow theater hakeem halusei aisa diaz thank you all and you can catch the eclipse monday april 8th with coverage beginning on gma then you can follow it live eclipse across america with special coverage beginning at 1 p.m eastern the main event starts at 2 p.m anchored by david muir and lindsey davis right here on abc news live don't miss it Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.